Hi, this is the second part of the ear infection in dogs. Today we'll be discussing um, how does your vet actually diagnose ear infections, how do we treat it, and uh, how can we actually prevent it in the first place from happening. So, you have brought your dog with an ear infection to your vets or with a painful ear, okay? And uh, usually what the vets would do is they'll perform a full examination so they don't miss out anything. So they'll go through the eyes, ear, uh, eyes, nose, teeth, listen to the chest probably, feel the abdomen, making sure everything is okay just because you bring it to the vet. For ear, then it'll be a little bit silly for them to miss out something obvious as well. So. Don't be surprised if your vet uh, sort of performs a full examination of your pet, despite having only a problem in the ear. Then after that, we'll probably do an outer examination of the ear. So we'll look at the ear from a distance, okay, and see how bad is bad. How is that a head tilt? How bad is a head tilt? And is a is a, your little doggy holding the ear funny? And sometimes we may use an otoscope, although this is a preference of some vets. Um, personally. I find it quite challenging and daunting to try to put something metallic into a dog's ear that is already quite sore and tender. So my personal uh, uh, sort of uh, option is I tend not to use an otoscope unless the dog is very, very, very good, not too sore, and there's a good reason too. Something which I do do quite often, which your vet may do as well, is they may take a little cotton bud, they may swab the ear, okay? So they're not really sending off to the lab, but what they're doing is they're swabbing and putting on a microscope, and then we look underneath the micro microscope to see what sort of bugs are there, okay? Uh, and the uh, treatment of choice is that if they don't find any sort of a raw bacteria, they probably give it some medication that usually is quite useful. If you find rot bacteria, your vet may advise you to actually do a swab to send off to the lab to find out exactly what sort of bacteria and more importantly, what antibiotics to use. So after that, what do we actually do the treatment wise? How do we actually treat? Okay, so personally, I tend to treat according to the cytology. Okay, if I see little round bacteria, cocci, okay, it's more likely for it to be staphylococcus or streptococcus and these two bacteria, they're quite easily eradicated with simple antibiotics. Sometimes I may see yeast cell as well. This particular yeast is called Melesthesia and it is also quite common uh, uh, to be there. And like I said uh, before, the yeast and cocci, they are present anyway in general, even in our skin but the immune system holds everything at bay and if there isn't anything different or wrong to hold to 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 make uh, to cause a problem it's okay but if there's a lot of it then yes uh, the good thing is that melesthesia yeast and cocci they're quite easily eradicated by using quite simple first line antibiotics which your vets would uh, prescribe to you however if we see rods okay so bacteria but they're rod shaped not round but rods um, I'll probably be advising a swab to be sent off just because rods they can indicate uh, bacteria like um, E. coli or Pseudomonas which do, they do tend to have quite a lot of resistance, potentially resistance to a lot of different antibiotics. So if I did not send the sample off, I can still give antibiotics, okay, and it may work but the point being is that if it, there's a resistance to it then there's no point giving antibiotic that, that, that does not work and we know that usually is cocci or pseudomonas that can cause uh, that they can have resistance, which is why when you see rods, um, your vet may ask them to be sent off. Okay, if they can't see anything on cytology, you know, do a little cotton bud swab and can't see anything below there, or if it's no better after the initial treatment, okay, uh, the next step potentially would be to swab, okay, and or or. Uh, to swap to send it off to the lab to find out what sort of bacteria is not being resolved uh, despite using the antibiotic that our vet has given or to potentially uh, look for a foreign body because if there is a grass seed stuck inside the ear and we find it quick enough because you brought it to the vets fast enough there isn't time for bacteria or malaysia to cause issues the swab may yield nothing at all, but if the ear is very, very sore or something inside there, we may have to go and take a look inside there to see whether there's a foreign body, a grass seed or something else, like a, 
I've seen little corn cobs before, I've seen corn ears before, I've seen uh, grass seed before. Uh, I've seen well, I've seen a tiny little piece of wire before, how it got inside there, I have no idea. But any sort of foreign body can get jammed inside there, can cause a problem that the dog can't get it out. They keep shaking and shaking, it can be quite painful. Sometimes you can see it uh, without sedation, okay, and uh, with the autoscope, but sometimes it's just so sore and so painful that it may be best to sedate to reduce the stress of, uh, of your dog to look for the foreign body. Um, usually what happens is that we would talk about giving the medication first checking for uh, and recheck in a one week's time okay and uh, there isn't a fixed sort of uh, rule to this it just depends from case to case so for example you bring your little doggy in with an itchy ear then we will do a cytology then potentially we see some cochlear amelicesia we give it one week's worth of medication we check the next week if it is much much better great if it is not better then we may want to um, sort of uh, investigate further how do we know an ear problem has resolved okay so that's a very very good question so yes you've diagnosed ear infection in the first place and the next week you bring your dog back to the vet what's he going to do to tell you that it's resolved the vet can probably do one of two things the first one is that uh, we can do a swab again okay and send it off to the lab to find out whether there's any bacteria uh, usually, usually that is not done, not all the time, that's usually not done just because of two different reasons. Uh, we, uh, we go to the second um, thing, which I said, which your vet might do, is that assessing on clinical signs. So the initial problem was that your dog was shaking the head, scratching the ears, rubbing the floor, okay? And now that has all gone and your dog is happy again, the ear is no longer painful, it's no longer sore, and uh, some owners they may be happy with that and not do any further testing and that is why sometimes um, further testing like a swab to find out whether there's any more bacteria is not done because um, your pet may not need to i look forward to see you in the next uh, live mt event this is amity